Hello everybody, it's Mike Levin, Thursday, December 8th, at around 7.50 a.m. I am once again on the early side heading in because I didn't finish up quite everything I wanted to do yesterday, but I did a great deal. Finally, I feel I'm sort of uh, firing on all cylinders and take, bringing out my A-game and how I was able to take a cloud server that was given to me by our DevOps department that I've been sitting on for probably close to two months now and not only bring it online, but have uh, hourly scheduling uh, in place and being tested right now. Uh, it's the bottom tier or close to bottom tier Amazon uh, service size instance, which is really all that's necessary for running uh, script files in, in the cron way. I might choose some other scheduler and also some other uh, deployment system in the future, but you know, I also got the box as a uh, authorized uh, contributor to my private GitHub repos so I can store work onto uh, GitHub and uh, pull it to different uh, servers later on if this stuff needs to scale. So I'm just putting the, you know, sort of the proto deployment uh, system in place just by making sure that all these different services and protocol types work with this box. Speaking of which, I also added Dropbox so that for shuttling files around on the network, I really don't have to worry when people, these, these files I'm generating with this system, oh, by the way, the other thing I did is I made it hit Google Search Console and do a giant data dump uh, to that local cloud server. And then that last piece Dropbox can put those very useful in even just their raw form, they're incredibly useful uh, CSV files into the hands of all the people who need them on a, say, a daily basis. So I'll have the uh, scheduled Python script actually create the directory structure it needs as it goes, you know, probably with years as the outermost thing. So there will be a 2017 folder and then there will be a 2018 folder soon uh, and so on. And uh, inside each of those years, there will be uh, probably a month index so that it alphabetizes properly a 01, a 02, and all the way up to 12, standing for this month, December. And uh, inside of those, there will just be, you know, 28 to 31 files a piece, uh, one for each day. If you need to do weeklies, I'll probably have a parallel system for weeklies. I don't think it's worth re-spinning through the dailies, recalculating averages, when you could just, you know, do a similar Google Search Console data poll to make sure that you're recording all that same data, but uh, I guess aggregated on a weekly average. So uh, your numbers will in fact be different from those two ways of looking at it and the types of trending lines you could do would be different. Uh, people might be familiar with that in Google Analytics, how it defaults to daily granularity for a really, you know, a line that has a lot of uh, movement in it. And you can switch to monthly granularity in which the line segments are much more chunky because you only need 12 of them to visualize a year. And so these are the types of, uh, you know, different things you'll be able to do with the data just for starters, you know, trending for keywords, for URLs, for platforms, etc. cetera. Um, but it can be used in a tremendous number of different ways, one of which uh, is my deliverable for 3 p.m. today. And before I can do the intended deliverable, I have to report <clears throat> on the effectiveness of things we've done so far. And those, uh, answers are in those files merely for the reading if you can pull up the correct url segments from within them now i tried doing this directly natively in excel yesterday and i realized in creating a filter i needed to tag each url with what campaign it belongs to in order to make the pivot tables or the filtering or what have you the showing of the performance of the URLs within the segment, an easy process, usually in Excel, because that's how people hand around these files and do interactive work sessions. So it turns out that 
Uh, that is going to be best accomplished still on the Python side, and I brought things over to the Excel side yesterday to try and do it on the Excel side, hit those obstacles. Now I want to do it on the Python side again this morning. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, stack my CSV files uh, locally. I'm not going to work on that cloud server. I'm going to work on Jupyter Notebook and have the power of Jupyter Notebook to do this well, fast, locally. Uh, stack the CSV files into one uh, tall table, pivotable essentially, and uh, spin through it and do the equivalent of a VLOOKUP or sort of a join so that I can, you know, take this file, which will have probably close to 300,000 rows in it, and mark each row when it's a member of a particular uh, segment, campaign, endeavor, you know, how are these URLs performing type questions, and you have a group of them with a label. So I'm going to be labeling subsets of this 300,000 row data set uh, for pivot table uh, and trend lines visualizations within Excel to answer questions about how campaigns are doing. So that's my project today. Got to do it fast, got to get into the office on the early side to get started and really drive through it. I might not produce the YouTube videos as I go. I'm on such a time schedule, but it would be an interesting one to do so with. There's a lot of learnings in there. I'm not using, I'm not gonna be using pandas, for instance, because I want to do this the native Python way, and it seems to me it's gonna be harder to learn the pandas API quick enough to do this than it is going to be to just express it in native Python. So anyway, thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you again soon, and don't forget to subscribe.